In the forests of Poland in 1943, a team of Allied soldiers led by U.S. Majo Marine Korpsinski is infiltrating a safe house guarded by Nazi officers to rescue a person of interest. They open fire after killing a few guards standing watch. Days before the mission, a member of the Polish partisans is given information about a scientist captured by the Nazis. Meanwhile, in London, Major Kaminsky and his superior, U.S. Army Intelligence General McLeod, meet with British Colonel Preston at an opera house to inform him about that same scientist forced to work for the Nazis' Project Fuhrvogel, Firebird, which is a massive weapon. Shortly after, the group returns to London headquarters, where four special British officers Colonel Preston chose are summoned. They are composed of Sergeant Will Davidson, Corporal John Waits, Private Mick Cooper, and Private Ben Lee. During the debriefing, they are tasked to join Major Kaminsky in locating rocket scientist Dr. Alexander Fabian in an undisclosed location where he can meet his family once a month. Since the Polish territory they will invade is surrounded by armed fighters and flak cannons, the soldiers will need to travel on foot after getting a lift near the Polish coast on a fisherman's boat. After successfully retrieving Dr. Fabian and his family, they must contact Polish resistance forces to request extraction using a British Navy submarine in the Baltic Sea. A night later, the team faces choppy waters at sea while on the boat due to a heavy storm. Simultaneously, Dr. Fabian busies himself with finishing the chemical formulas for the project when Nazi Sturmbahnfuhrer Lehmann arrives to notify them that they must prepare to leave for the meeting place, as he has been given a whole day to spend time with his family before returning to his work. Later, the ship's captain stops miles away from the shoreline and requests Kaminsky and his men to take a small boat to cross the sea to avoid the German patrol boats. While the men paddle their way to shore quietly, the captain lowers the attention of the patrol boats to his vessel by shining a headlight. At dawn, the team walks the snowy path to the thick woodlands. Simultaneously, General McLeod becomes worried about the mission's success at London headquarters due to limited radio contact with the team. Still, Colonel Preston assures him that his men are well versed in any problematic situation and can adapt to the mission environment. Shortly after, a Nazi patrol unit spots the Allied team's empty campsite and realizes a threat. Meanwhile, more than expected, the team discovers at least 20 armed guards scattered in the meeting place. Still, Major Kaminsky insists on continuing the mission for the sake of the scientist's life. Inside the warm cottage, Dr. Fabian tries to enjoy lunch with his daughter and wife, Kalina, who is visibly stressed by the guards in the next room. He calms her down while assuring her they will be together permanently once he finishes the Nazi project. His daughter plays the piano to lighten the mood, much to Lehman's disdain, believing the doctor wastes precious time. Outside the perimeter, Major Kaminsky discusses the plan to attack the safe house's weak points while creating a distraction along the road to throw the enemy soldiers off, using their anti-aircraft guns against them. Using the cover of darkness and the element of surprise, they assassinate the roaming officers and position themselves. The team starts an explosion, alerting Lehman to retaliate in a shootout. Major Leminsky shoots the guard and sneaks inside the house but finds Lehman holding Dr. Fabian's wife at gunpoint as he steps out. Fortunately, Corporal Waits fatally shoots him in the back, but at the cost of Kalina's life, getting hit in the waist and killing her instantly. Though Dr. Fabian and his daughter become distraught over the loss of their matriarch, Major Kaminsky urges them to keep moving, with time running out before they are discovered. They lay her body on the sofa inside the house and say their goodbyes as Corporal Waits apologizes. Shortly after, they leave the compound with the moonlight guiding their path through the woodlands. At London headquarters, General McLeod receives a message from U.S. intelligence saying that the Soviet's undercover NKVD squad is hunting down Dr. Fabian for their own purpose. By morning, the Soviets, led by Petrov, discover the Nazi safe house deserted, deducing that a team from the Allied forces has intervened. They decide to track their footsteps while wearing Nazi uniforms to blend in. Meanwhile, after hours of walking through the snow, Major Kaminsky and his team discover the Polish partisan camp abandoned requiring them to rethink their evacuation plan while Private Lee recovers. Using the map, the Major takes them to a small village where they can bunker down to look for the partisans to guide them to the extraction point. Upon reaching the area, he and Davidson enter a local pub where they meet a friendly Polish contact. He secretly informs them that the German collaborators spooked the partisans, forcing them to flee from the campsite. He instructs them to head north toward a hill near the crossroads to find them. Elsewhere, the NKVD squad tracks down the abandoned camp and kills the Nazi patrolman passing by on the main road. Meanwhile, at London headquarters, Colonel Preston and General McLeod become worried about the team due to their failure to radio their current status. Based on the weather report gathered, a storm is on its way to the Baltic, which may prevent the men from using a boat to travel to the rescue submarine. Colonel Preston suggests that one of their C-47 planes could land at the abandoned Polish airfield and pick them up inconspicuously. 
Elsewhere, the Allied group rests a while to gather their strength before they walk uphill. Suddenly, an exchange of gunfire erupts as Nazi officers appear in the trees. Luckily, a group of Polish partisans retaliates and quell the enemy soldiers to save the group. One of the partisans, Sarah, leads them to a war-torn village to recuperate. After they eat and get warm, Major Kaminsky requests help, but Stanek, angered by the presence of Dr. Fabian, wishes to kill the doctor for collaborating with the Nazis. Dr. Fabian apologizes for causing their disagreement, elaborating that he had been researching atoms and nuclear fission, which can power millions of cities if the energy is harnessed correctly. Alternatively, he adds that a massive amount of atomic energy can create an explosion, which the Nazis want to happen with their new weapon. Realizing the potential of this research to the Allied forces, Major Kaminsky demands the partisans' aid, which Stanek approves as long as he agrees to kill Dr. Fabian if he is compromised. Later, the Major contacts General Preston, informing him about the success of the recovery. He gets instructions to prepare for extraction at the airfield by morning. Still, before the Colonel can warn him about the Soviets, he turns off the radio. Meanwhile, Sarah educates Dr. Fabian's daughter about using a pistol to protect themselves in case of danger. Suddenly, Stanek announces an immediate evacuation prompted by the sightings of German patrols. Sarah requests Major Kaminsky and his team's help, who agree to provide cover fire while protecting the doctor and his daughter. Shortly after, the group walks uphill toward the village but gets ambushed by the Nazi soldiers and a panzer tank. An exchange of gunfire erupts as they hide behind the snowy ditches. Meanwhile, Petrov and his squad arrive at the scene and instruct one of the officers to locate Dr. Fabian and capture him alive. Both sides take severe injuries and casualties during the fight, ending when many partisans fall, including the two private officers. Sarah escorts the surviving team to safety while the NKVD secretly follows closely behind. Meanwhile, Colonel Preston and General McLeod urge one of the captains of the British Air Force to fly through Polish territory the next day to retrieve the scientist, knowing how crucial his knowledge can help end the war and save lives. In the evening, the Allied team bunker down in a safe house prepared by Sarah. She assists in patching up Colonel Waits, who got hit in the stomach. Shortly after, she takes Sergeant Davidson to the bedroom to heal his wounds and make love to him after falling for his advances. After resting, the sergeant confides in her regrets for killing both enemies and innocents during his tenure as a soldier and being haunted by their faces. In the next room, Dr. Fabian consoles his daughter, embracing her as he promises to make things right once they are rescued. He talks to Major Kaminsky, airing out his concerns over the extraction. With the revelation that the Major has a family waiting for him in America, he pleads with him to protect his daughter if he does not make it. The following day, Major Kaminsky steps out to get firewood when one of the NKVD officers ambushes him in the shed, leading to a brief struggle. Unfortunately, Petrov and the backup arrive, asking the Major for the doctor. Sergeant Davidson awakens, alerting everyone about the Germans' intrusion, but Sarah clarifies that they are Russians disguised as she hears their thick accent. They let the Major free, with the condition that they transfer Dr. Fabian to their custody. With no other option, Sarah pretends to hold the doctor at gunpoint, threatening to kill him unless the Russians back down. Unfortunately, the daughter misreads the situation, shooting her in the back and killing her instantly, thinking she will hurt her father, much to Sergeant Davidson's dismay, having grown fond of her. Despite this unfortunate scenario, the plan helps the Major escape to a vehicle unharmed with his team and doctor. On the way to the rendezvous point, the sergeant throws a grenade at the German patrol unit, prompting them to follow. They later dodge a passing panzer tank's gunfire. German reinforcements start shooting at their vehicle, injuring the sergeant on the shoulder. They halt in the middle of the road as the fuel runs out, forcing them to flee on foot while keeping the Nazi officers at bay with grenades. Nearby, Petrov and the NKVD squad watch as the Major and his group get pinned down by the enemy fire. Realizing their alliance against the Nazis is essential to keep the doctor alive, they help by disabling the panzer tanks and retaliating on the foot soldiers. In the middle of the skirmish, Sergeant Davidson gets shot, and a member of the NKVD sacrifices himself to help Petrov and the others flee. With time running out before the C-47 plane arrives, the sergeant, accompanied by Waits, makes a difficult choice to stay behind to provide cover fire since he cannot walk properly due to his injuries. Eventually, the two men die at the hands of the Nazis while Major Kaminsky, the doctor, and his daughter escape from the battlefield. They run towards the plane and successfully come on board, though the Major is shot in the waist. Sometime later, at one of the Royal Air Force hospitals in the UK, General McLeod visits Major Kaminsky during his recuperation. He tells him Dr. Fabian and his daughter were relocated to the United States in an undisclosed location. Though the Major sounds off his regrets over losing his men, he hopes the doctor's research will be worth it. A recovering British soldier asks him if he will return to see his family. 
Still, he does intend to. Meanwhile, inside an American research facility, the doctor leaves his daughter at the cafeteria to continue his work on the atomic bomb. In World War II's final years, Allied soldiers who undertook the secret ALSOS mission successfully crossed enemy territory to rescue scientists and secure the data for the Manhattan Project. During this scientific endeavor, only Polish physicist Professor Joseph Rotblat refused to participate for moral reasons, eventually getting awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his campaign against nuclear weapons. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.